1997, you co-authored a paper entitled Abortion Legalization and Child Living Circumstances, Who is the Marginal Child? On page 20, you conclude that abortion legalization appears to be associated with an improvement in the average living circumstances and birth outcomes among a birth cohort. And on page 26, you state that your research indicates that the legalization of abortion saved the government $14 billion in welfare payments through 1994. Is providing more access to uh, abortion, is that a worthy social outcome to achieve cost savings for the government? That is uh, not what my paper was about. It wasn't a philosophical okay. paper. It was about empirical facts. About that was meant by this sentence. By 1993, all cohorts under the age 18 were born under legalized abortion. And we estimate steady state savings of $1.6 billion per year from positive selection. What did you mean by positive selection? Because in this paper, you're talking about providing more access to abortions to a socioeconomic strata of our constituents. What the paper did was look at... What did you mean by positive selection in abortion? In that paper we were studying the characteristics of children who were born before and after abortion was legalized. If by comparing those characteristics, you can infer the characteristics of the kids so who were not you, born. So what you inferred, I find chilling. What you inferred is that if we reduce the number of people or children born, life will be better for the rest of us still living. Specifically, you seem to suggest that if we eliminate or reduce the number of poor people that are born, this will make life better for all Americans. And this gets me to my final point which is the Independent Payment Advisory Board. My constituents fear that this is, in fact, a method by which Obamacare will ration health care for the elderly and therefore implement cost savings for Medicare. So my question to you is, does your philosophy on abortion, that it can save money and improve outcomes, have any implications in the realm of end-of-life care? You argue that abortions of poor children raise the average living circumstances in your paper for the rest of us, and save the government money. So, Dr. Gruber, if there are fewer elderly people, particularly poor elderly people, wouldn't that save a ton of money, too, as an economist? Wouldn't you think that would save a money, too? And do you understand the dangerous implications of going down this path? I have no philosophy of abortion. I have no philosophy of end-of-life care. My job as an economist is to deliver the empirical facts all can make the necessary... So what would your decision. facts be? on the elderly? I don't understand the question. The end-of-life care. Do you advocate that the federal government should ration that? No, I do As not. an economist, would it save money? I do not advocate the federal government should ration end-of-life care. Thank you. I yield back. I thank the gentleman.